in a small garden behind her home in Soweto Township, Julia Mavimbella begins early with her students. Since the death of her husband in 1955, Mrs. Mavimbella has devoted her life to equality, literacy, and a better life for her people. In 1976, she became a founding member and eventually co-president of Women for Peace, a multiracial organization that now numbers over 16,000 women. Shortly after, she began a campaign to raise the literacy level of women organizing a group that now has 783 branches, teaching women to read and write. And her extensive work in organic gardening has transformed many unused areas of Soweto into places of beauty and productivity. I teach them, and then I leave them. I said, you carry on. I'll come back as a supervisor to you. And indeed, we've been able to get children they go back to teach their parents. Makes my soul happy. I'm serving my people as the Lord would want me to do. In October 1981, Julia Mavimbella came in contact with missionaries of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. After extensive study and investigation, she became a member of the church. What the church has done for me, I feel is an answer to some of the many problems that are encountered in my country. It has changed me from being bitter to love other people. It has made me to understand that in forgiveness, there is a blessing that I could also be blessed in the end. I feel also that what the church stands for is that we are one. We are all children of one, and that is our Heavenly Father. I love my church, I love my people, and I love my sisters, and I love the sufferings of my people, that I should be often around, help wherever I can. In 1979, physician and surgeon Emmanuel Kissy was preparing to leave London, where he had served a three-year residency in surgery and returned to his native Ghana. My colleagues couldn't understand why I wanted to return. Some asked me, why don't you stay? I told them, the British people want me, but my people need me. Dr. Kissy and his wife operate a private hospital in the suburb of Accra, Ghana. Their objective is to relieve suffering and provide medical care to as many Ghanaians as possible, regardless of their ability to pay. We spend much time with people who cannot afford to pay. And this drains on what little profit we make. But when I see the suffering of my people and their great need, I couldn't do otherwise. Dr. Kissy, his wife and seven children are members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. In addition to his work as a physician, Dr. Kissy has become a leader of the church in Ghana, overseeing several congregations. The church has taught us what Jesus Christ taught during his time, that we should serve our fellow men. And uh, this makes us uh, feel like we must remain at home and help our needy, poor people, rather than look out for greener pastures where we could make wealth and uh, enjoy the material gains of the world. And I think this desire to remain at home and help our people in our own country is a great thing. And uh, I'm pleased that I'm part of it. Julia Mavimbella and Emmanuel Kissy are among many who have found peace and a deepened desire for service as members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Their philosophy is reflected in the words of an ancient prophet who said, when ye are in the service of your fellow beings, we are only in the service of your God. The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints was organized on April 6th 
1830, in this log home near the village of Fayette, New York. Not a Reformed church or a Protestant offshoot, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints was a restoration of Christ's original church. A prophet of God named Joseph Smith had received revelations and authority from heavenly messengers who had been sent to restore the original church of Jesus Christ to the earth, as the Holy Bible predicted. Like the church of Jesus Christ in former times, it was and is headed by a prophet and 12 apostles who guide the church according to continuing revelation from God. The church teaches that the best place to prepare for eternal life is in the home. Parents are encouraged to hold weekly family home evenings with their children, where they study together the principles of the gospel of Jesus Christ. These principles include honorable and virtuous living, caring for self and family, service to others, and loyalty to one's country. In Zimbabwe, these young church members are learning at home and at church what it means to follow the Savior and his teachings. We believe in being honest, true, just, benevolent, virtuous, and in doing good to all men. We believe in being subject to kings, presidents, rulers, and magistrates, in obeying, honoring, and sustaining the law. Each Sabbath, members of the church gather to receive instruction and to recommit themselves to Christian principles by partaking of the sacrament. O oh God, the eternal Father, we ask thee in the name of thy Son, Jesus Christ, to bless and sanctify this bread to the souls of all those who will partake of it, that they may eat in remembrance of the blood of thy Son, and witness unto thee, O oh God, the eternal Father, that they are willing to take upon them the name of thy Son, and always remember him, and keep his commandments which he has given them, that they may always have his spirit to be with them. Amen. In the church, there is no paid local clergy. Members are called to serve in various leadership positions and perform these duties during their own time on a non-paid basis. Throughout the world, each congregation is locally led. In Soweto, Lovedalia Vilakazi is the local president of the Relief Society, the church's organization for women. In West Africa, electrical engineer David Eka serves as the supervisor of 14 congregations in the Abba area. In Chicago, public health inspector Kathy Stokes directs her congregation's program for young women. In Atlanta, businessman Robert Stevenson oversees his congregation's program to develop character in its young men. What my membership in the church has done is to provide a framework, a focus for me to live what Jesus taught. And that is to love one another as I have loved you. It's enabled me to live my life without the bondages of not knowing why I'm here on earth, where I came from, why I'm here, and where I'm going. There is no other place so conducive, so comfortable in doctrines and in teachings like the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Wherever you come from, you will be accepted fully in the church, right from the bottom up to the highest ordinance in the temple. And there is no place like being in the temple of the Lord. It might not mean much to people hearing what I'm saying for the first time, but there is another world in this world where ordinances are done for both the living and for the dead. And where we take our own endowments and get sealed and married for life and for eternity before our Father in heaven. These things are the kind of things that we will uh, enjoy as being full members of good standing in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. 
In addition to its spiritual blessings, the gospel of Jesus Christ encompasses the practical concerns of life's daily challenges. In East Africa, the church combined efforts with TechnoServe to assist several villages in building and maintaining their own water system, which now carries potable water to the homes of 1,100 families and numerous public buildings in a 15-village area. In West Africa, the church provided well drilling equipment and trained local technicians in its use. These locally trained technicians have since drilled several wells in areas of critical need. The knowledge and skills they have gained allows them to carry on the work indefinitely, providing new wells to meet the needs of their people. Two thousand years ago, Jesus of Nazareth sat by another well in Samaria and spoke to a woman about living water. And Jesus said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. It is this living water that his church offers to the world today. The gospel of Jesus Christ can make people self-reliant, provide purpose and meaning to life, and give a peace and hope that can come in no other way. The church is true, and I know Jesus Christ is the head of it. It is a church which no man dictates, but he is the one that inspires our leaders. I know it's the truth that many people are looking for, and I have found it. The gospel softened my heart and it opened my eyes in order to permit me to see the marvelous things that the Heavenly Father created for, for us. I became a better man, a better husband, a better father, a better professional, and a better citizen for my country. I think that it, the church has demonstrated that it has a genuine and deep concern for, the, for the, the society in which it works and has been proving to be a very good citizen. The gospel principles of uh, family prayer, uh, family home evening, and family scripture study have helped to make my family a united and happy one. So in this sense, we, we've gained quite a lot. I am satisfied that the decision which I took then to have my cabinet approve registration of your church was a good one, and that the church has lived up to its responsibilities in the state. I believe that that very basic principle that Jesus taught, love one another as I have loved you, will be the salvation of our world. I believe that my membership in the church helps me to carry out my part in that as a citizen of the world. And that is very, very important to me. I would say that if it were possible for a community or nation, or members of a community or nation to accept the gospel, such a community or nation would be an ideal one. There will be no crime, and all the members who work hard and give selfless service to the community. And such a community will be a progressive and happy one. That, to my mind, is what the gospel is all about. Mm -hmm.